Welcome, my friends, to another 40k video. On this day, we draw on Realm of Chaos for Lost and the Damned and look at the Star Child and where the Emperor might return. And also in this, we will see the final moments of his fight with Horus. How did he come to be that corpse upon the throne? What does he do to get there? If you've been here a few months, you might have heard me cover some of this before. But this particular book that I'm drawing on is different to the previous source I used and goes into a little more tantalising detail for you to listen to. Let's get straight into it. When the Emperor confronted Horus, he was faced with the corruption of chaos at first hand. It could not have been difficult for him to envisage a future universe where chaos was triumphant and all humanity had become as corrupt as Horus himself. This vision was as repellent to the Emperor as it would be to any right-minded human being. Yet the victory of chaos seemed certain, for chaos wormed its way into the minds of humans by exploiting their natural human emotions, their hope, friendship, independence and other human characteristics which were not in themselves evil. Even the Emperor was not invulnerable. Just as Horus had been corrupted, he too ran the risk of being perverted by the touch of chaos. But the Emperor was the embodiment of the uncorrupted warp, and for him to be tainted by chaos would be a catastrophe unparalleled since the fall of the Eldar and the birth of Slanesh. As the Emperor confronted Horus, he drew upon the energies of the warp, as he had never done before. His frame grew and swelled with power, discharging crackling bolts of energy like a god of thunder. When the Emperor plunged his sword into Horus, the energy of the warp flowed through the Emperor, down his sword and into Horus, burning the war master's flesh and sinew and destroying him in a searing flash. But the Emperor had overextended his own powers, for no man of living flesh could act as the vessel for so much power and survive. The charred husk of the Emperor fell to the ground amidst a pall of smoke and darkness. As the Emperor lay dying, his psychic energy ebbed from his body. The immortality which had been sustaining him for so many centuries was no more, and the weight of age descended upon him. His body shrank and his bones cracked. His eyes sank into his skull and his skin darkened, so all that remained inside his armour was a shriveled, mummy-like thing. Released from his body, the Emperor's psychic power, his soul was cast adrift upon the tides of the warp, to be carried on the random undercurrents and eddies of the Sea of Souls, until such time as it was ready to be reborn. Although the powers of chaos hunted tirelessly through the warp for the Emperor's soul, they could not find it. The warp is huge and its energies dispersed and flowing. Like the shamans of ancient times, the Emperor was at one with the whole warp, so his soul melted easily into it and so remained hidden from the powers of chaos. The Emperor's body was taken and placed in a life support machine. Although he was dead by any ordinary understanding of the word, while most of his cells still lived, they provided a link through which his spirit could communicate with the material universe. While his body was relatively fresh, it could be animated and was even able to speak a little. Thanks to this, the Emperor was able to supervise the construction of a special psychic life support machine called the Golden Throne. Even the Golden Throne cannot keep the cells of the Emperor's body alive forever. Over the millennia, the link between his soul and body has become increasingly tenuous. Worst of all, the powers of chaos have begun to infiltrate his mind, sowing seeds of doubt, dissolution and fear. It was impossible to say for how long the Emperor can survive in this condition. It is unlikely that even he really knows how much time is left to him before the tenuous hold upon his physical body is broken by weakness or finally rent apart by insanity. As the spirit of the Emperor drifted through the warp, it gradually dissolved into the flow of energy, returning to the cosmic force of the nature of the warp in its uncorrupted form. Only a tiny core of the Emperor's humanity remained whole, like a small child bobbing upon the tide of a colossal storm in a tiny reed boat. Thus the soul of the Emperor was cast adrift into the warp, 
while the Emperor's soul survived, there was still hope for mankind. For just as the new man had been born from the collective souls of the shamans of old, so the Emperor's soul might be reborn one day. But that day would lie far in the future when the crimes of a new saviour would strengthen the core of the Emperor's soul and rekindle it into new life. Meanwhile, the soul of the Emperor was, was merely a potential, a child awaiting birth, the star child. The humans that were left in charge of the Imperium had no real understanding of what had happened to the Emperor. The concept that he could be reborn again never occurred to them. To the rulers of the Imperium, the Emperor continued to live, though his body was broken by means of his indisputable powers. Only a few select individuals learned the secret over the following millennia, and they became the highly secret brotherhood known as the Illuminati. They await the birth of the Star Child and the second coming of the new man. They know their knowledge makes them dangerous heretics in the eyes of the Imperium, and consequently maintain a strict secrecy over their activities. Meanwhile, the Illuminati remains a secret force in human space, working away behind the machinery of government and commerce, preparing the way for the rebirth of the new man, the rebirth of the Emperor of Mankind. When a champion of corn, Nurgle, or any other chaos power, pledges himself to the service of his patron power, his very soul becomes part of the power's energies. The Star Child also has his champions, known only as the Sensei, although they do not necessarily know their true identity. These people are actually descended from the Emperor's own descendants, and their genetic structure is similar to his. Not all the Emperor's descendants are Sensei, and almost none of them realise what they carry, genes from the Emperor, or that it is this which gives them their powers. The fortunate combination of genes the Sensei have inherited from the Emperor makes them very special. Their most important trait is their immortality. Although they can be killed, they do not age and possess amazing powers of recovery. They are also protected from the chaos powers, and the intended flow of the warp can move through them unimpeded. A sensei cannot experience hate, bitterness or irrational anger because these things are part of the disharmony of the chaos powers. They radiate natural confidence and harmony and can even draw upon the energies of the warp to use their psychic powers. Sensei do not risk attraction demons or other malicious psychic forces by using their powers. Being untainted by chaos, they are utterly invulnerable to the predations of the chaos powers, in fact because they harbour no trace of the emotions and concepts embodied by the chaos powers, they are largely invisible to them. And the Illuminati, we mentioned earlier, their role is to gather the Sensei, to form a band of Sensei Knights, who will await a final battle that will take place against the forces of chaos. But... There's a real intention behind what the Illuminati seek to do. They want to sacrifice the Sensei. Sacrifice them as the Emperor dies. Like many psychers are gathered and sacrificed to keep him going. And when that happens, the Illuminati at least believe that this will lead to the rebirth of the Master of Mankind. And at that point... Perhaps the Emperor will be able to go deep into the warp, to the hiding places of the gods of chaos, to confront them and end them and free humanity from their plague upon the galaxy. And that's where we'll finish on today. I read it directly from the source just to get a lot of the juicy details there. Got a comment to make? Drop me one down below.